Hi, I'm Erin Larkin. I'm here with John Jens and we're doing episode two of Australia's Greatest Cabernets. Now, I understand that all of the Cabernets that we have here are from Western Australia. I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm also not going to take any shit, but if you want to heckle me, that's fine because um, that's been happening and I'm really welcome. <laughs> welcome that. Um, let, let me have a go first. Yeah. Look, we're doing a West Australian Cabernet perspective right now. Um, we're looking at five wines from Margaret River, an excellent, excellent wine from the Franklin River. And perhaps, I mean, perhaps there's definitely another video in us, let's be honest, Australia is full of great Cabernet. Um, and so we will be touching other regions in our next one. But we're that also- That wasn't an excuse for this one, just letting you know. But we're also looking at the wines from uh, not a number of the most prominent and long established winemakers, but the winemakers over the last 15 years or so, rather than the last 25 or 40, um, that have dominated the Australian yes. wine show circuit. Yes, important. In Deep Woods, Xanadu and, and Horton, believe it or not, Horton have done brilliantly on the Australian wine show circuit, wine show circuit, capital city wine show circuit, and almost no one knows. Nobody knows anything about Hortons in terms of the the show dominance that they have asserted over the country, but um, we're here to tell you it's pretty significant, it's very exciting, and if you don't drink Hortons, it doesn't matter if it's the stripe range from the very cheapest at 10 bucks a bottle all the way through to Jackman at 125 130, or 130, yep, 40, more, yep. more, 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 150, I don't know. Um, all of the wines in between are exceptional. So you also forgot to mention this up and comer, but there's a story there and we'll come to that. It's very limited and very exciting. Wine number one, 2017 Xanadu Stevens Road Cabernet Sauvignon. So Stevens Road, if you've ever been to Voyager Estate, if you've ever been to Lewin Estate, you've been on Stevens Road. This vineyard is on Stevens Road. Now remind me the, um, history of that vineyard? It was founded by a group of Perth business people, very high profile, lovely people, involved in football, involved in the arts, involved in major Western Australian corporations, and one of the key people at Lewin Estate. Lewin Estate have had some great people. One of their key men, John Broxop, the greatest viticulturist, presumably who's come to Western Australia, was heavily involved with getting the whole thing going and was a partner in the business. And the wines that were initially made at Lewin Estate, and then um, the guys from Xanadu personally bought the vineyard, not as a part of the company, um, and, uh, and have just turned it into a wonder block for both Chardonnay and Cabernet, and they are doing brilliantly in the capital city wine shows around the country. Yep. The Xanadu Cabernet style um, has, and I don't know about you, this is, this is definitely an assessment thing, so you may disagree with us, but I've looked at a lot of Xanadu Cab. I love what they do there. The style is typified by blackness and, and density, but also lightness. These wines have finesse and delicacy, but they, they are recognizable for like a, a, like a black pepper cassis sheath that goes over the wine itself. Um, this is from a cooler vintage, 2017, birth year of my older son, so I'm pretty happy to see any any bangers that come from 17, I'm all about it. There is finesse and lightness here. I mean, it is gorgeous. The purity of fruit, which is the same that I find in their Chardonnays, it's a house style that they, that they um, encourage, produce, are responsible for down at Xanadu. I mean, we just recently looked at the 17 Reserve, which has got greater density and more darkness to it. This is just beautiful. It's raspberry, strawberry, black pepper. There's cassis, there's blood plum, there's all these good things. There's structure and tannins, there's length. It's a beautiful wine, it's very elegant. We were talking about a wine recently, and I don't remember which one it was, and I used the word willowy. So it's um, to, talking about my, the Mount Mary Quintet. Is in, what you said. in my in my way of thinking, my way of my limited way of speaking, in comparison to Aaron, um, this wine is finer and more elegant, and it just it just lingers and uh, drifts over the palate elegantly and in a fine way, and brilliant finish, brilliant aftertaste but very young at the moment. But we want context. 
I want context. So remember, Big these guys have won six of the last seven best Cabernet. Sorry, six. They won six consecutive best Cabernet trophies at Canberra, and seven of the last eight. These guys are truly, truly great winemakers, and they've won many, many other wines as well. And in fact... Don't forget the, the Jimmy Watson for their 2016 Black Label Cabernet. Which is only about $35. Boy, and it's cheap. And uh, we've got different retail backgrounds. Uh, and um, and um, what we find, and I've talked about this before, is that the Reserve Cabernet with this... Um, the Reserve Cabernet from Xanadu, from, sorry, from Stephen... Oh, no, no. The Stevens Road yeah. Cabernet... Uh, is invariably finer, more elegant, and I prefer it of the Cabernets to the Reserve from the home block at Xanadu. This is down over by Luna Estate, as Erin said, the other home block, whereas um, in the Chardonnays, uh, the Reserve block mm. is again over at the winery, which is only a couple of kilometres away, but I prefer that almost every year, whereas the, in the Stevens Road Chardonnay, I find a touch behind it, but you'll have to work that out for yourself because everyone's got different palettes. Um, so I prefer the Stevens Road Cabernets, and these guys, I'm telling you, you'll never know because it doesn't get written up in the press, this show record is extraordinary. These, they'd be one of the three great show winners in Australia on the National Capital City Wine Show Circuit. You know... For, and it's nearly all with Cabernet. Not all, but nearly all, sorry. For um, Cabernet drinkers, which the Xanadu guys are, this has a distinctly Pinot-esque elegance about it. You say willowy, it's silky, it's plush, it's fine, there's layers and nuance. I mean, anyone would think that they like Pinot. I would say, um, and uh, and she would know. Believe me, um, well, this, these, this is our hometown. We 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 know and love these guys. Um, yeah. Moving yeah. on to wine number two. So this is the 2016 Cape Mantel Cabernet Sauvignon. So um, Cape Mantel have been around since the early 80s in Margaret River. Correct. Uh, 79, I'd 81. I'd need to stop, need to 70, stop and think about that yeah. first. Yeah. Look, late 70s, early 80s. Um, this is one of Australia's most well-known Cabernets, I would suggest. One off in the top 10. Yeah, we have a number of amazing Cabernets in this country. This is typified by raspberry and plum, but this actually, like the fruit profile moves into raspberries and plum, plums, but the the dominant character in the Cape Mantel Cabernet now is, is high quality French oak um, and, and workmanship in the winery. So what, what are your thoughts on this wine? It's very classy. Okay, firstly, um, Cape Mantel's gone through a number of eras in winemakers and quality levels. Um, the early days with David Honan, then his team did very well, two Jimmy Watson winners in a row. Uh, the years went by. The early 90s were a great period. The latter half of the 90s weren't so great. Um, then Rob Mann, Jack Mann's grandson, the great Jack Mann in West Australia, MBE, and a man beyond his time, before his time, just an extraordinary man uh, who... Man, man. He, um, he did brilliantly in the only wine show of his era, the 30s and 40s, the Royal Melbourne Wine Show, um, Gold medals and trophies every year on, I think, five separate occasions he won champion wine of the show from the hot baking Swan Valley. His grandson, Rob Mann, uh, was with Accolade, then with Kate Mattel during another one of the great periods from 2000. Certainly, the great period was from 2008 to about 2012, and they were just wonderful wines. Um, now, we move on to the 2016 when this first came out, I contacted the guys and said, do you reckon this is the, is the best of the wine so far? They said, mm, 2011, 2012, 12, probably the best wine we've made so far. And, um, but 16 is a very um, it's silky, elegant, long, round, balanced, even, lovely with dinner, lingering flavours, wonderful finish. I can't reach it. Um, lingering finish and aftertaste just drifts off into the distance quietly, subtly. Um, not one of the world's greatest wines ever, but a wonderful Australian Cabernet, and I mean amongst the best. I pointed it very, very highly. I like it very much. Delicious. Yeah. And wonderful with food now. It can be drunk early, can be drunk in 25 years. 
Correct. And we do see these wines um, very, 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 very old <laughs> in their 30s and 40s, and they are absolutely astoundingly delicious. So recommend these are a collectible wine and for good reason i actually have a when we said we're going to put cape mantel in john said what vintages have you got at home and i was like mm, back to 10 i think so there's an you should be collecting them they're great um moving on talking about segways there's a lot a lot of segways in this lineup and if you haven't already spotted them we're going to we're going to tell you about them. Um, we're moving into an up-and-coming label called Carimbia. So Carimbia is made by Rob and Jen Mann. If you remember, John was just talking about Rob Mann, who used to make the Cape Mentel wines. The, the grapes for this uh, wine are sourced about 6 k's inland from the coast in Redgate, off Redgate Beach. Is it 6 k's or 3? It's very close to the coast. It's small distance. Um, and I would say, and this is just my assessment on Rob Mann's winemaking style while he was at Cape Mantel, but the, the wines are typified by tannin. And I said earlier that the wines now are typified by oak um, and spice and winemaker. Um, I think that at his time they were tannin, and it's not it's a distinctive tannin profile because you can find it in the Carimbia. It's a, it's a grape tannin. So you can get tannin from a number of different places, oak, grape, others, but, but Rob has an affinity with grape tannin. And when you drink a wine that is rich in grape tannin, it has a, a chewiness and a succulence, do you think, to the palate. So when you're drinking it, you're like, oh, you can kind of drink it and chew on it a bit. And it, it gets you going back for more. And that's how I feel this, this Carimbia Cabernet is typified. So obviously 18 was an exceptional vintage. 16 was also exceptional. 18 was an exceptional vintage in Margaret River. And if you're seeing 18 Cabernets and Chardonnays now, just buy them. I mean, they're all great. I haven't seen too many duds at all. Uh, okay, then. So the first one, the Xanadu, is youthful, vibrant and alive and the other terms we discussed. The 16 Cape Mintel, placid, long, even, lingering. This is slurpable, delicious, seamless, gentle. Uh, it's not succulent, but it's juicy. And uh, juicy, round, seamless, mm. fine rather than big, powerful and structured. Just a lovely mouthful of one. In five years ago, ten years ago and backwards, you could never have seen a Cabernet like this. This is soft, gentle, dense, long, plush, seamless, lingering, and absolutely wonderful. Not a $100 wine. It's about uh, $70 recommended $70. retail. These two are about, around, around about 100 And um, wonderful value for money, gentle. And we've already said that um, Rob Mann, the winemaker, was at Cape Mantel for four or five years during their greatest era ever, and it was their greatest era ever. Then Moet Hennessy transferred him to Newton Vineyards in California, which they also own because they own Cape Mantel and Cloudy Bay, and um, moved him to California. Jancis Robinson wrote an article, the great Jancis Robinson, wrote an article uh, discussing uh, a, a meeting she had with Rob and said, wow, I've listened to this guy's thoughts. I'm interested to see where he's going to go because this guy's worth following. Two years later, at the, I think it was the Canter World Wine Awards, um, his wine uh, from Newton Vineyards got the world's champion Cabernet, got the champion Cabernet in the expensive area um, up against all the other wines, probably 15,000 wines in the show. I don't know how many were Cabernets, but best Cabernet in the show. He has since come home to Western Australia where his family are all involved in food and winemaking and that just the whole dynasty is involved in food and winemaking, winery after winery, restaurant after restaurant, and um, um, uh, this is now off his... He's only got a couple of acres, a hectare, of Cabernet fruit. This is off his own vines as he starts to explore and expand and to work for other people where he's also doing marvellous things. If you see the 18, buy it. It's all sold out at the winery. It's only if retailers have bottles left. Um, the 19 is just or will just be released. Rob, Jen, I'm sorry, you'll have to correct or at least um, pinpoint me on that on that point. But it's, it's the 2019 release is imminent. Um, if you see them, get them. Incredible. Have you heard anything about the 19 yet of, of, from these guys? Um, I haven't. No, I haven't been talking okay, about okay, it, so it's, I'm sure it's happening soon. Um, 2018 Nocturne. So Nocturne um, is a wine label that is the collaboration of a husband and wife team, one of the great husband and wife teams in Margaret River. There actually are a number, number of um, really exciting husband and wife teams 
in WA but also in Margaret River and um, this one cannot be overlooked. This is Julian and Alana Langworthy. Alana is famous for cheese and great cheese. She has Yelling Up Cheese Co. Um, and she's a winemaker as well because she's beautiful and talented and makes cheese and wine and everything else that's good. And Julian Langworthy is the great winemaker from the Deep Woods Fogarty Group um, and everything that he touches seems to turn to gold, which is um, evident in this wine. So I'm, this is the 2018 single vineyard, She Oak Vineyard from Nocturne. Now this wine is um, a standout in this lineup because it is juicy and bouncy and succulent and plush, but it is also spicy, structured, long and beautiful. I mean, this pretty much has everything you want from Great Cabernet at, a, at around the $50 price point. I'd need to check too. Oh, yeah, look, it's not very much money. It's incredible wine. And there's not very much wine either. <laughs> no, it's limited in every respect. Okay, so Julian, uh, uh, as Erin said, is the extraordinary winemaker at Deepwoods. Uh, four consecutive Best Cabernet Trophies at Melbourne recently. Uh, quite extraordinary. Missed out last year when Xanadu picked it up. Um, and the, um, um, but he also oversees the, the Evans Tate Reds. He oversees the wines for that they sell to... Um, Aldi to Woolworths to uh, vintage uh, vintage sellers in Liquorland. Um, he and I'm trying to think of other things. There's other things well, as I'm well. Gonna, I'm not even going to interrupt you. There are so many things that he is has his fingers in that. Look, but but the, the point great. being that he's each great. one of them is winning trophies, gold that medals, or brilliant reviews in each instance. That's, that's enough of that's that. That's the point. Yeah. Look, we don't need to say any more about that wine. It's exceptional. The couple that makes it are exceptional. Everything there is to love about a wine is in this glass. Get it. 2016 Deepwoods Reserve Cabernet. Now, this is not the current release, but I've included it because I bought a dozen of them when they were released. It subsequently got 99 points from James Halliday. It was his top Cabernet of the year in the 2020, 2019, 2020, um, one of the two Wine Companion mags. Seriously good Cabernet at about seventy dollars a yes, bottle. I mean, yeah. it's it's vastly underpriced. I looked at this wine at the two thousand and sixteen Cape Mantel Cabernet tasting. If you haven't splurged on that day, can I highly recommend that you do it? If you love wine, if you love Cabernet, you have to be there. It looks at first growths. It looks at the greatest from Australia. It looks at the greatest from America. It's an astoundingly amazing Cabernet tasting, and the who's who of Cabernet are there. This wine was featured in that tasting last From year. From Europe as well, and the great international oh, wine writers. Oh, of course, writers. Yep. or Nalaya, yep. all the greats. Um, this Cabernet was featured last year. I thought it was Bordeaux. I gave it 98 points. I freaking love this wine. I was very pleased because obviously I have quite a bit left, maybe seven bottles, six bottles, five now. Um, this is a really densely structured, spicy, spicy Cabernet. This is not light and finessed like their southern neighbours um, in Xanadu. This is this is densely concentrated, so two very different styles, both equally delicious in their different ways. Um, if you're a Bordeaux fan, I would suggest going to this, leaving it for a couple of years and looking at it, say three, four, five years after release. John, what's your thoughts on this wine? I love this wine. Um, same produce, same winemaker, Julian Langworthy, Julian Langworthy, senior winemaker Sorry, of Deepwoods. And um, uh, perhaps, and I really don't know because I haven't tried to work it out. I, I don't know, but let's say 15 or 16 best Cabernet trophies uh, since 2012. He would know. Uh, in, um, in, on the Capital City Wine Show circuit, including, the, as I mentioned before, the four consecutive at Melbourne, two out of three at Adelaide, including two out of three uh, Max Schubert trophies for best Cabernet, uh, for best red wine in the show as well. What about the 2014? Uh, Jimmy Watson trophy winner. Massive. Thank you very much. Massive. Forgot that one. Massive. So, with these guys, it's easy to forget because they do, they do so many. Um, usually, uh, they don't have necessarily, remember they're half the price of most of Margaret River's Great Cabernets and Australia's Great Cabernets, um, but they, and they may not have the final and great length, but the, uh, the gentility, the softness and gentleness, the fineness, the aristocratic nature of the fine, gentle tannins around the soft, and I think you used word, words like dense and intense fruit characters. Um, the tannin handling is marvellous, becomes a wonderful drink. The older they get, the better they get. Some wines you wonder about how they're going to age. Um, uh, ages magnificently, just get better and better and better. Mm. Love the style, love what they're doing and love the pricing. In Western Australia, um, 
one of the most sought after wines in that price range, one of the most sought after Cabernets, in fact I could change that, to perhaps the most sought after Cabernet in that price range, A, because of a show record, B, because of those soft, gentle, plush, ripe tannins mm. that make it very drinkable early as well as, will, as well as that will allow it to age for 25 years. Purchase them on spec, on release, they go every year, they always sell out, buy them, age them and look at them in a couple of years, they are sensational wines. Um, moving into one of Australia's least known and most amazing <laughs> Cabernet regions, and that is Franklin River. Jack Mann um, Cabernet Sauvignon has been around since the early 90s, 94. 94. Um, obviously, Jack Mann is Kate Lamont's grandfather. Kate and John are married. It's a big family thing. Um, this is one of Australia's great Cabernets that so few people know about. At least not enough on my book because this is a sensational wine. Now, I've never tried this wine. This is only newly released in March. Um, Franklin River is just the unsung hero of Australian Cabernet. I think there's four great Cabernet regions in Australia. I know that's going to get heckling, but I'm going to tell you what they are. Margaret River, Franklin River, Yarra Valley, Coonawarra. Okay. So... Um one of the things that has intrigued me, intrigued me over the years, and I may have mentioned, I don't know, in, in the last video on Cabernet, wow. was that... Uh, sorry. It's the first time I've seen that. <laughs> uh, was that um, um, there are three producers in West Australia who have significant Cabernet assets in the ground um, on both sides of the state, in Margaret River and in the Great Southern. Um, Howard Park, Horton and Larry Cherubino. In a way that I can't understand because of the imagery that comes with Margaret River... Um, each of them has their most expensive Cabernet coming from the Great Southern. Quite extraordinary. They obviously look at these wines very, very carefully. They believe, I'm assuming, that the Great Southern is superior. The, um, the 2000... Jack Mann's have just got better and better and better as the years go by. The 2016, 2014, then 2016, they believe were their best yet. I didn't know what the lineup was when we tasted them prior to this tasting. I gave this very, very high points, thought it was fantastic. Had it picked as another wine where I thought it wasn't so good, I thought, oh, they've slipped a bit here. Then when it was on, I must thought, whoa, what's even better than I thought? I love it. Um, Jack Mann's a very big thing here in West Australia, and Jack Mann was the great winemaker in West Australia uh, for 30 or 40 years, did 51 vintages at Horton, done marvellous things, and this is another very, very good Cabernet out of, the, out of the Franklin region. The 2016 vintage was featured at the Cape Mantel Cabernet tasting last year. I obviously didn't know what it was. I spoke on the second bracket with James... First bracket? James, first first bracket, bracket. James Halliday. Yep. And um, this is the wine that I thought was supple, bouncy, contortion-like in its ability to move over different types of flavours and textures. It's a sensational wine. If you haven't tried it, do yourself a favour try this wine. It is beautiful. Any vintage is great. I just think it's a gorgeous expression of Franklin River, a region that just does not get enough airtime. But if you listen enough to me, you'll probably get sick of it. And the only thing I'll add is that um, because Margaret River gets all the kudos and it's won 34 of the last 42 Capital City Wine Show Best Cabernet Trophies, but the Great Southern, in my opinion, the best wines... Um, and two others, the Howard Park material and a couple of others varying year by year, um, match those for their very, at their very, very best. And to, to illustrate that, to work that out for myself, I organised and then um, for some years did what we called the Hype Cup. Had about 100 people, um, 18 different cabinets, half from the Great Southern, half from Margaret River, and totally masked them, did three separate vintages, six from each vintage, because there aren't too many great cabinet producers in the Great Southern. And there was... We could not separate them in terms of quality. Yeah. The, the, the votes were taken, all written down, big screens around the walls. Coming up was like a football grand final, Collingwood coming through. And um, um, the crowd roared when the, uh, when the scores were going up on the, on, on the walls, on the big screens. Um, the Great Southern and Margaret River, Margaret River is supposedly the best cabinet area in the country, could not be separated. The Great Southern, and no one knows it, produces great cabinet opinion. Well, we know it. Um, and if you read any of my articles in the Halliday Mag, you also know it. Um, look, that's about all we've got time for today. An unbelievable tasting. There will be more Cabernets coming up. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps me make more videos like this. I love making more videos like this. It means we can try more wines and tell you about what's great. Thanks for listening. And until next time, drink well. Drink the best.